Hey everyone, a quick programming note. I had to push off our episode with Jamel's Bricks about breaking into this hobby. We had a last minute scheduling conflict and had to adjust. However, Dash Bricks was kind enough to come in at the last minute to be on his episode about citizen brick culture. Also today, we'll get to meet Carrie, one of my other co-hosts that will be popping in once in a while. She's awesome, Dash is awesome. This episode is gonna be awesome. So without further ado, let's go. the next shiny new thing bring me the next shiny new thing bring me the next shiny new thing bring me the next shiny new thing hey everyone welcome back to another episode of the big fat big cast i'm your host brett also known as peak over 40 and today i am joined with carrie or as you may know her as kirpy and her bricks say hey carrie hey carrie <laughs> So before we get into today's guest, uh, we're going to go ahead and introduce Carrie because nobody knows who the hell she is. Yeah. So Carrie, if you want to take a moment to talk about yourself and say how long you've been collecting, what you collect and wing it. Just wing it. Okay. Um, so I'm Carrie. I'm a funny, funny Canadian gal. Um, been into Lego for quite some time. Started with Star Wars Lego sets and then... I discovered the wonderful world of Citizen Brick, and I guess I started collecting in 2019, officially, and I currently collect Mini Bigs, True Red, Citizen Brick, and I love Mr. J, and yeah, it's about all that's exciting over here. Okay, if you haven't, you couldn't tell from her, a boot, she is Canadian. Did I say that? Oh, what do I call this episode? Do I just call it High Dash or A Dash of Bricks? Or <laughs> Ooh, I like do, that. I it, do I call it? <laughs> we're going to be mostly focusing on CB, but I feel like we're going to also, some of the stuff's going to apply to the others as well. So, do you have any ideas? Well, one thing I started using like as a hashtag is just custom Lego because I think it's, I mean, it's not, yeah, it's not like superhero. It's not. It's not all pop culture and a lot of it's, um, you know, people's own designs. So it's, it's a tough one. I just go that with a custom catch -all. Lego. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. All right. Today we are going to introduce Dash of Dash Bricks. We are mostly going to focus on Citizen Brick. Although as of last night, it was tentatively confirmed that Joe, the owner himself of Citizen Brick, will make his way on here. He's currently prepping for CB Day, which is going to be soon. So we're going to wait till after that. So again, we got Dash here. He's a longtime staple in the CB Bigs, Truid, K-Town, Eclipse community, or I guess we'll just call it custom Lego community. Dash, say hey to everybody. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, thanks for <laughs> bringing me on here. Uh, we appreciate you coming on. And so the first and foremost question that I've gotten, we, we've got a lot of questions from, from listeners, which we'll put towards the end. Some of them will be covered within the body of this podcast. Might as well start from the top, which is basically, how did you get started in all this? Well, I started collecting, uh, I might have been around 19, so that was, uh, how long ago was that? Might have been like 2012, with like regular Lego, the, the CMF specifically. Uh, I'd buy it for my little brother, and then I was like, hey, wait, that's kind of cool, I'm, I'm going to keep some of these. And then uh, I think most people kind of get into customs through brick arms, so so yeah, I saw those, and I thought those were awesome, and uh and, and then kind of led me to Citizen Brick. But I didn't start collecting Citizen Brick kind of seriously until 2018 when I, uh, when I started on Instagram. That's basically it. And I, I've been focusing on Citizen Brick since then. So I, I've known you for a couple of years now. You were pretty much one of my mentors in understanding Citizen Brick. In fact, I still hit you up on DM saying, how much should I pay when I'm looking for this you know, item or whatever? But yeah, you I, all, I get a lot of messages like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you but you dabble in a lot of things. I mean, you're dealing with Citizen Brick and Bigs and Eclipse, but you've also get into superhero customs. Like, you, you know, I know you're a fan of some of Abnormal's work and Mr. J. Mm -hmm. How do you keep up with everything 
and and like so what like what kind of rules do you use to determine what, what's worth spending money on i mean i mostly collect but like you know the boys by uh jocka and abnormal like i love that show so i mean I, i've been buying pretty much everything they make of those um with, with superhero stuff i only buy certain things it's probably based on how much you know i have available at the time or you know how much i like that character but uh yeah, it, it's definitely hard to keep up these days. But yeah, I mean, I have I have a, a little bit of a, a lot of different brands, though. You are you are a bit of a celebrity in the customs world, whether you know it or not. Um, I don't know if I'd say that. I don't know, because <laughs> on my shelf, I've got a I've got a shipping crate from Eclipse Graphics with your name printed on it. Right. So yeah. I was, can you tell us the story? Do you even know how that all came to be? Because both you and Sket are Eclipse parts famous at this point. Yeah, that um so so my friend Mike Citizen Hoarder is uh he is on Instagram. Yep. Um he does a little bit of design work for uh for Eclipse Graphics and, and he kind of just added those on those crates as a surprise. So that was pretty cool though. I I have a couple of those too. Do you had no idea? No, I didn't know until he showed me. Did did Vic know that who you were or did he just like, oh it looks cool. Let's just throw it on there. I'd imagine he didn't. Um, uh, I'd imagine he didn't care. I mean, I, I have a good relationship <laughs> with Vic, even though I, I don't buy like all of his products. But uh, I'm sure he, he thought that was cool. Oh, I was. Uh, I, know, Vic, Victor's in Phil Slug. I don't know if everybody knows that, but yeah, he, he's a member in there. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to Phil Slug. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I uh, when I went to Brick Fair last year, I was name dropping like everybody. I know Mike, and I know I know Dash, I know Skid, mm-hmm. and like. Want to throw a little extra something in the bag? Uh, that didn't work. <laughs> but um, you know, we've talked about how you are. Uh, you generally, you know, you dabble in multiple facets of the customs world. Um, but with that subsection, that CB, mini big, true, and etc. This past winter, there seems to be some sort of sick game of fate where these guys are all putting out drops at the same time, or one weekend right after the other. Like true, it's a machine. He just announced another drop. This come uh, I think on the thirty first. Mm-hmm. Do you prioritize, or if you do, like how do you do it? Or I mean, are you you strictly focus mostly on CB and grab what you can elsewhere? Or you know, I'm just curious how that all works out for you. It's funny that you ask that because usually Citizen Bricks the priority, but um, since you know True Red kind of does those like one of a kind figures that he releases individually, like Citizen Brick Day. Yeah, the fusions. Um, yeah, I actually went for True Red first, the last uh, drop that they all, you know, had their own drop that weekend. Because wow. there were a few figures, like I love the monster stuff, like Monster Fighters, that, that was a, a theme that I was into. But um, yeah, like I, I love horror Lego stuff. That, that's kind of like one of my favorite themes. Um, well, we do have, yeah, we have folks that, yeah, they focus on Jason or you've got Freddy that I owe you like three posts on. I have not forgotten. <laughs> So, you know, that actually goes into one of my um, my next questions. You have actually have a secondary account, Dash Brick Sales, uh, where you list off random figures and parts from your collection. But you've also recently started selling off dyed parts of both Lego and even Citizen Brick uh, parts. I was mm-hmm. curious about how you discovered the idea of how how did you know of dyeing parts, and how exactly does that process work? In glorious brick sales. Um, he was the first person that I saw like dying and selling parts. Oh, he you know, did like, the uh, bloody rabbits, great, right? Like... He did the bloody rabbits. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he did those. I actually have one too. <laughs> yeah, he was the first one I saw uh, dying and selling, and then like like his stuff is great. Like nobody's doing it better than he is. Somebody sent me a link. Uh, how do you say his screen name? It's like Saturn Saturnalia Armory, something like that. It's one um, of the things I've learned in this podcast is. I've never said the names out loud of a lot of people I talk to almost every single day. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah lots of type in that. You don't really think about that. But uh, anyways, he, he sent me this YouTube link. To, it, it was how to dye yo-yos. You know, it's like ABS plastic. And uh, so, you know, you could do that with Lego too. Yeah. There, there's like certain tricks you can do to like keep part of it, the, the original color. And uh, you know, like you can use glue, like Elmer's glue. But uh, I mean, Using that's kind of like an art of itself. It's like I, I hate doing it. It's it's so much work, and then you never know how it's going to turn out. 
So, so for those who don't know, and I've posted a photo when I received it, where I worked out a deal with Dash. He made this dyed Freddy torso and glove, and it's it's absolutely perfect. It's like it's the CB Freddy, whereas that may lean a little bit more towards the I don't want to insult it by saying cartoonish, but more vibrant colors and whatnot. This one became out more muted and more realistic. So I I owe him three three posts uh, that I haven't done any photography since I started this podcast. So that's probably the first on the list. Okay, so with the dye, like how how long does that take? I mean, how long does that to sit in, in the uh, solution? It it really depends, like how hot you have the water. I've never tried to leave it in for for a long time. Most of the time, I just do like two minutes, six minutes, something like that. But I mean, so I've heard some people leave leave a part in for like a whole day. Um, I've never tried that. I don't really have an interest in waiting that long to do something. <laughs> <laughs> like i'm not a patient person i mean like it, w- when it comes to pre-orders yeah because i don't think about the stuff but but yeah like when actually doing something i don't have a lot of patience <laughs> well that's funny you mentioned patience because this is one hobby you're in right now you definitely need a lot of it especially when dealing with our courses and brick uh, collectorship since since i have you here as my subject matter expert of course carrie as well uh, I want to go over Citizen Brick because this whole podcast, its whole mission is not only to bring on interesting people and have interesting conversations, but if you had a moment to re- listen to the FOMO episode, I know a lot, of, a lot of folks gravitated right to the Adam, you know, Phoenix Customs episode. The FOMO episode, I feel, is more of what I'm trying to achieve with this podcast, where I want to educate newer collectors who are trying to break in, but also reiterate points that maybe longtime collectors may have forgotten. So that being said, I want to do a primer on Citizen Brick. So what I'd like to do is just go over a few terms and talk about those things. And you can probably give us some backstory and we can help these folks understand what exactly is about Citizen Brick, how to collect Citizen Brick, the negotiating, the trading, the whole, you know, gamut. We're going to start with the, is, is, is the terminology because there's a lot of terminology that I was introduced, you know, within when I started collecting Citizen Brick. Now, in episode two, we talked about fig barf. We covered that. But for those who may have missed it, it's the practice of putting together various, often not related parts together to create unique fig designs. But there are more niche terms I like to go over, specifically misprint. Uh, most folks, especially in those in the, maybe the purest Lego community, they hear misprint, they're thinking of a misalignment or uh, a, a bad print. Misprints have a totally different meaning within Citizen Brick. If in your own words, Dash, what would you, how would you explain what a misprint is? Uh, a misprint with Citizen Brick is basically just a color variant. Like, they, I mean, they print the same design on it. There's nothing wrong with the design. It's just a different color. I mean, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah. Now, the one thing I've noticed with, you know, colors is some folks grow attached to colors. Like you tend to target parts that are in lime green, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And Sket does medium lavender. Carrie, what color do you usually go for? Oh, I am a bit of an aqua ho. And I don't know if I can say ho on this podcast, but I did <laughs> twice. Um, but yeah, that's typically what I like first. Okay. That's your 007 character name. Yeah, aqua, aqua ho. ho. <laughs> that's the t-shirt. That's the t-shirt. It's happening. So, okay, like for myself, we were talking about rules of FOMO and help how to keep yourself from, you know, spending all your money and going to crippling debt. I've, I've limited myself to not chasing colors. I usually just go for the yellow. Uh, usually it's the most abundantly available color. Nobody wants it. So, you know, as much as they want the fancy, you know, bow in the darks and trans clears and magentas and all that stuff. I just go for the yellow heads and by and large, when you put them all together, it looks pretty impressive. So Miss Prince is going to come up again later in the conversation uh, with some of the more relevant discussions regarding collecting. The HOF or the Hall of Fame is the, well, actually, you know what, Dash, I'm going to let you explain it. Well, I'm not a Hall of Fame member, but, but I mean, it's just, it's just uh, people that Joe selects that, you know, he, that they've either been collecting for a long time or, you know, he appreciates what they do in the community. I'd, I'd say, I mean, I guess he can tell you himself. Uh, many, when, he, when you have him on, do you think you're in the Hall of Fame? 
Um, let's see. I think I just asked uh, one of the other one of the other guys who is who is a Hall of Fame member. I think he said there were like nine or ten. I think he said ten, but uh, one of the guys sold his Hall of Fame medal. Yeah, and, you know there was a the whole thing about that, but uh, but yeah, I think there's ten right now. In the interest of keeping this podcast positive, we're not going to dwell on that subject. Right. Yeah. So coming out uh, recently, those who do follow Citizen Brick may have seen the post for the Big Shot Fig. These are specialty figs that are, are different colors. I think how many? How many have come out so far? Nine. Uh, let's see. There's gold, silver, uh, lime green, black. Uh, there's a blue one, a red one. What am I missing? I have no idea. I feel like you're looking at them right now. No, no. I you just remember like, them? Well, actually, I can open a drawer up and, and look right now. Let's see. Oh, well, humble brag. <laughs> well, I'm I'm standing right here in front of them, so let's see. <laughs> so the the gold one is not mine. I, I just bought that from somebody or traded or something. I oh, you sit on the throne of lies. <laughs> oh, there was a white one. Yeah, that was the 2021. I think that was the only one I missed. Was that seven? Yeah, that's seven. So this will be, I guess, the eighth one. The big shot fig for those who don't know is a it generally shares the same design every year a uh, different color as dash has already illustrated basically um, allocated to members of the citizen brick community who have spent i think joe phrased it as a significant but reasonable amount of money mm-hmm. he actually came out on that last big shot post and actually on the record said the qualifying criteria is around approximately one thousand dollars how many do you have but i think we've already answered that <laughs> yeah I, I have all of them so far but they they're all not all mine and i guess joe has even said something about uh stolen valor <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i've seen these on ebay uh i've seen damaged ones on ebay i i personally right i feel like i'd be encroaching on, on the community if i were to buy one and say look at this one on my display if i didn't earn it however honey if you're out there my wife uh earmuffs uh, so i have earned one this year i think Maybe, possibly, I hope. Congrats. Thank you. And, it, and it's a banging color, too. You know, oh, still, they're nice. They're so I'm, nice. I'm really excited about it. And uh, I, I I decided that if, if one were to arrive in the mail, I'll keep it in its packaging because now. Uh, all right. So earlier you mentioned the Filth Lug or Filth Lego user group. This is something that I don't think I've ever heard an exact definition or explanation of. I just kind of learn through observation. And hashtags. If can you go ahead and go explain that one for us? Explain the you know, what just what it is. Yep. Um, I mean it's just it's just a bunch of dudes being dudes. Now if Carrie's in there too, <laughs> but but um <laughs> uh no, I mean it's just kind of we we post like inappropriate Lego stuff for the most part. So there's a hashtag you're interested, you can just search it, just make sure there aren't any little kiddos around. <laughs> or you're not at work or someone some supervisor can see you they're, they're, it's dark i wouldn't say it's dark humor it's more like yeah filthy humor right that's probably more appropriate well well, there's uh, a guy in there uh his accounts it, it's spelled funny but it's mike akizichi and uh <laughs> like he posts the most ridiculous stuff on there yeah that, definitely not safe for work all right so next up is the tlbm or the lego black market it's another unique subculture, which I am not a part of, so I can't speak intelligently to it. I don't know how Secret Scroll, you know, technically, so if you can talk to it or not. But if you could explain it to the audience. Um, I mean, for a long time, we, we kind of wanted it to be like a secret thing. Um, I, <laughs> I don't really want to talk a lot about it, but uh, I mean, it's, it's basically just a group chat on Instagram. I mean, dash, dash. A, a I'll, I'll cut that. Dash, I'll cut that from the recording, okay? I don't want to get you in trouble. No, I mean I'm the one that started the group, but oh. <laughs> it, 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 it's kind of it's kind of just like a. It, we used to keep it a, a big secret, and then they then we made those torsos and. Yeah, you said you, you got around. printed parts. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean you, you can't we can't like hide it now, but I mean it's it's nothing it's nothing real special, but I mean like there's sometimes we do like claims, say like I went to the con. Um last weekend whatever you know kind of distribute those parts amongst the members i mean they're gonna pay for them obviously but right just right. kind of 
hook, hook him up well, to there, there's nothing members. to be ashamed about having a general chat of what could be considered possibly i'm not i'm not gonna use this term i don't want to say elite collectors but those are long time well-established collectors because that exists in the superhero community as well mm -hmm. you know that in fact because you're in that group chat as well <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's basically <laughs> the same thing but there there's some perks to it well and that's and that's well and good because you guys have earned those perks so yeah uh it's just these are like you said it's not hidden very well anymore so if right. someone were to have not, questions, you don't have to at least cut that they out. see it yeah so if they see it they see the hashtag i mean the hashtag's been used a few times you know like like i'm personally not in it i don't desire to be in it because i don't have the energy or the finances or focus to do what would be needed to be a part of that yeah, i'm too group busy chats are I'm too busy. I've got too many group chats. I can't do another one right now. Yeah, gr group chats are a very bad influence on spending habits. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, especially, again, going back to episode two, FOMO, for all you fools that didn't listen to episode two, I'm probably going to refer it till the end of time. But, yeah, when your friends are all buying stuff, you're going to want it to. When they all start posting their loot, you're going to want it to. Uh, so, and I can tell you right now, the general chat I'm in for Superhero Customs is um yeah it's definitely a bad influence <laughs> so all right well two more to go uh citizen brick day carrie i'll give you a stab at this one how would you like to describe citizen brick day Ugh, my the first word that comes to mind is like anxiety uh i'm like <laughs> i get up i'm like sweating already i'm shaking <laughs> i like just uh it's so stressful um, but anyway, the good side of it is it's basically the day that Joe releases all these sweet misprint figs. There's, there tend to be more like every year. So last year it seemed like there was like a thousand pages or more, I think. Anyway, but yeah, and it was like, I think it was like 70 something pages. It was like, yeah. And then half the stuff I saw like way later when everyone's like, oh, check out what I got. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't even see that. Um, yeah, but whew, I'm, I'm stressing just thinking about it, just talking about it. And, and look, I, I laugh, but I empathize because I, I know what you're talking about. Everyone activates their bots. Not just, just <laughs> 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 so, so citizen break day is a once a year event. It's just like, it's like the super bowl of citizen brick. And I've seen people recruit friends and family to just buy shit you know, as fast as they can, not even looking at what it is. There's all these accusations of people on bots or their internet connection goes out. But yeah, it is definitely, um, it's one of those anxieties that's, well, it's like getting on a roller coaster. Like you're fearful when you get on it, you get on it, you're screaming your head off. But when you're done, you, you get that endorphin kick. You kind of want to go again. But I mean, that's, yeah. So that's coming up. I'm not going to put a date on there because but it should be within the next two months based on what Joe's conversations were with me last night, but I'm not going to put a date out there, but it should be within the next two months. All right. So lastly, in terms of citizen brick lore, um, a while back you and Nick did this hilarious video. Uh, Nick, I saw I'm referring to brick cinema. I'm one of my co-hosts, uh, the man who created the awesome teaser trailer for this podcast, but you did this, he did this hilarious video spoofing the spring breaker set. Could you explain the lore? Okay, so I don't know what year it was, but this the uh, film studio A24 they commissioned Citizen Brick to uh, to make that set of figures, um, and, they, and they like gave it to cast and crew or something like that. Um, there there are a few Citizen Brick collectors that have that set. I don't have it personally. I have like one figure from it, but yeah, like they're, they're super hard to find. But anyways, um, I, I like painted these uh, knockoff figures like super shitty. And uh, I, I even made the box like I, I painted this box and like cut it out to, oh, to it was like, brilliant. That, that size. And um, I, I even uh, made this like slip out cardboard stand that, so, you know, you could pull it out of the box to, to look at the figures or whatever. But but yeah, I just I just I did it to be funny. Like I didn't tell him I was sending it to him. I did it as a surprise. But but yeah, it, it turned out super funny. And he didn't tell me he was making a video either. Like he did that as a surprise. 
yeah, that, uh, it was hilarious. No, um, it was funny. Some of the comments were like, some of them were sarcastic, obviously, because they get the joke. Some of them it felt like they didn't get the joke. Yeah, so it seemed like some people thought that invoice was real because, like, I typed it out on the computer and and like edited it to uh, um, to look like he actually paid seven thousand dollars. Which, which there is a collector that uh, bought the actual set on eBay it was a year or two ago uh, for for that much. Yeah, that was my follow up question. Was I, I've heard I've heard rumor that it gone for seven thousand dollars at one point. Yeah, I mean it's crazy, but it, if you can afford it, that's that's kind of the the set to spend seven thousand dollars on. <laughs> yeah, I um, it's it's funny, you know, we we talk about the superhero side and how expensive these minifigures are coming in at like one twenty, sometimes you know anywhere from between like forty five to one twenty, one fifty. If you're getting like crazy, like uh, like say like Life Break Deadpool, or whatever, with all the accessories, and. <laughs> But then here comes little old Citizen Brick with your thousand dollar big shot figs and your seven thousand dollar spring breaker set. Kind of like you know them paying so much for the what is it like the gold plated uh, Star Wars figures or whatever. Oh, those the C3PO, are. yeah. Yeah, so I know some of that stuff's crazy expensive. And the SDCC uh, Spidey figs. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, my my theory on this is you're not like starving your kids to pay for it or skipping out on your mortgage payment. Mm. Whatever the hell you want to do with your money. I don't care. You know, but you earned it. And uh, if you want to blow that much on some plastic, that's your prerogative. I'm not going to spend that much, but it's all you, man. You know, yeah, but I can't judge. I mean, I've yeah, never spent that much, but I spend stupid amounts on some things. Seriously. And, yeah. I love uh, some of that sideshow stuff. I got a few of the six scale figures. Oh, and it's ridiculous that you can get this giant st- ass statue for less than a minifig. <laughs> you look at these statues like, I don't know, man, $85. That's a lot of money. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, but, but it's amazing how you can see like a sideshow figure for like $120. You think, oh, that's a lot. I don't know. Then you see yeah. this minifigure for like $150. <laughs> you know? So, all right. Well, that's actually all the vernacular I want to go over for this. The uh, other stuff I want to really touch on to is the, the art of CP collecting. Uh, I could definitely use a veteran's opinion on some of these things. We'll go jump right into the secondhand market because secondhand market pricing, it just seems like it's very fickle. Prices come across as pretty subjective, especially how the culture leans heavily more towards trading as opposed to just outright selling. And at that point, your stuff is always less valuable than their stuff in their eyes. Uh, <laughs> what? So what are your observations on this? How, how do you tend to navigate these types of situations? And do you, do you have any tips for those who are trying to trade or even purchase? Um, I mean, I, I can start out by saying like, yeah, the prices are just all over the place. Sometimes I'll kind of just throw something out there where I think it should be worth. Ba- like I look at eBay a lot to see what things have sold for. And sometimes I'll base my prices on that. The problem I found with eBay is, okay, so basically the amount of CB collectors has grown, right? A lot in the last couple of years, especially during yeah. COVID when everyone was sitting at home. I was having this conversation with Adam last episode about you know, all these reports about how Lego is a great investment. And then Joe released the President's Woodski fig, which made worldwide news. And that thing started popping up on eBay within seconds of being for sale for like 10 times the value of which it was sold. And a lot of those folks on that just scour the next trends for eBay are still sticking around, it seems, for a citizen brick. You know, hoping hoping to find that next spring breaker set, so to speak. But sometimes I see things for like ridiculous amounts. They're still available on the website for 25 bucks, but they're trying to make you buy it on eBay for like 75 bucks. Uh, it's buyer beware, really. And then on whatnot, you know, the auction site. Now we've got some folks that are citizen brick purists that are now doing their their um, their own targeted auctions. So they attract citizen brick educated collectors, but we have a lot of non CB collectors that are hosting CB auctions. You know, they just have parts in their pile or whatever. And I'll see if an $80 fig go for like $35 because the audience isn't aware of what the going rate is. Kind of piggybacking real quick on that, on the navigating the trade. I mean, what advice would you give to someone just trying to get started and finding these older parts? Because there's so many places to go. Uh, I'm just not quite sure what what like what's your process. 
Um, I, I mean, I've had people ask me like, dude, how do you get some, how, how did you get all that stuff? Um, I mean, there's, there's different ways that I get my citizen break. Like I get a trade friend sometimes, obviously I buy directly uh, on the site or citizen break day. Um, let's see. I mean, of course there's eBay. I mean, those, I'd say those are the, the main places, but I mean, I, I visit citizen break sometimes like i visit hq or i've gone to the shows those are good places to get some like really good parts but you know it's just sometimes just doing something nice for somebody they might help you out later on i mean can't really can't really expect that but i mean it's always nice when that comes back around yeah yeah i, I would say even similar with the superhero side in a roundabout way every answer to every one of these questions is going to be about community and networking Mm-hmm. Uh, and making sure that you build those relationships. So I've I've gone to Brick Fair with a shopping list for my buddies. I've bought Carrie stuff, you know, at, at Chantilly last year. I bought Nick and and Zach and a few others. But I have learned, lesson learned, to get the really good stuff, you need to go get the early access badges at these trade shows. Because yeah, I'll be telling everybody that. Yeah, cut that, cut that. <laughs> because I tell you right now, I went to general mission day one. I thought I was all proud, jump a few hours early to get early in line. I get there, I'm like, <laughs> I got scraps. <laughs> yeah. Got some good scraps. I was like, I was like, I didn't see anything that everybody was rolling out with. And uh I found out that all the all the all the big dogs had, had gone there and taken care of business. I'm not I'm not throwing shade. Uh, I, I personally I feel if you want you want to play this game, you got to adapt to the rules. I'll probably be going in early this year myself, just for, at least for the experience. But one thing that threw me off, you're talking about doing nice things for others. When I did get the parts for those at Brick Fair, you know, I get to my car, I'm taking some pictures, and I wait till I get home later on. I sort everything on my desk and saying, figuring out who's going to get what based on the, on the shopping list of colors or parts or whatever. And then everyone's asking me, okay, so how much do you want? I was just like, oh, I paid this much. So give me this much. So I guess I'm an outlier or I'm a noob or what, but I didn't upcharge for anything. And I guess that's the norm is folks do that. Um, there, there's some people do, that do that. I mean, if, if, if I'm hooking up my friends and I tell them I'm going to hook them up, like I give them what I paid. Um, I went to Brick World Indianapolis um, this past weekend, and uh, well, I guess last weekend it is the weekend right now. Yeah, like I, I just gave them the price I paid. I mean, th- there have been times where I've sold Citizen Brick for more than I paid, obviously, but I guess I, I guess I'm trying to be a little better about that. <laughs> like, if someone reaches out to you and says, "Hey, do me a favor," I can see maybe throwing on a few bucks for that "quote unquote" service, right? And talking to other folks, some felt it kind of helped promote a, almost a scalper mentality because they thought, I'm just going to grab all this good shit so I can flip it later. And again, you're a prerogative. You can do what you want to do, but I think the community will the community will take care of itself. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, um, I mean, it, it would look bad to Joe. Like, I'm getting, like, all this good stuff, and then, you know, I'm going home and, and selling it for crazy amounts on eBay. Like, people do that. And, you know, I, I can't say I've never tried to get a lot for a figure that I got, you know, relatively cheap or something. But, yeah, yeah I guess if, if you want to think about the relationship you have with that brand, too, um, you know, that what would they think if if they knew that you were doing this? The reality is, though, it's not like the parts aren't exclusive to people. Everyone has equal opportunities to get those parts. So that's why I don't take too much offense to it you are making the effort to be there and you want to show your support, you shouldn't be limited in being able to do that. The the rest that whatever you do after the fact, I think it's just the community will watch and, you know, they'll know. Well, also there's, there's also like, at what point are you being greedy? You know, (laughs) there's not going to be anything left after. I mean, and and that's another thing. Like if, you know, you're going to flip those extra things where somebody that was there didn't get them, that'd be pretty shitty. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I also yeah. did want to mention, like, um, just because you're going there early doesn't mean that he brought the good stuff. I I, I used air quotes uh, <laughs> when I did that, but uh, yeah, I mean, you you really never know what he's going to bring. It's it's kind of you're just taking a chance. 
Yeah, for me personally, it was just great meeting him and saying hi. And uh, I'd gone two years prior, well, the year before COVID, that was before I, I um, was really involved. I was just starting to dabble in CB. I remember, I remember there was this one kid and he was like live streaming to Instagram, taking requests as we're going through the bins. <laughs> I was just like, Jesus, man, this is hardcore. I was on that live stream. It was brutal. <laughs> but that was really nice of him. Like he must have been so stressed out. Do you remember who that was? That was Beef Bricks. Beef Bricks. Okay. And, and he hooked up like a ton of people, but um, I, I, I felt really bad because people were just like, give me this, give me that, go back, give me this. And he's like trying to move on. And it was pretty chaotic, but. Well, I actually oof, found myself kudos. looking for stuff that his buddy was looking for. He's like, well, oh, find this, find this. I'm like, I was like, oh, no, no, that's in this bin. And I started helping him because <laughs> I was like, this guy is just like going frantic. You know, <laughs> He's like trying to stop the scrolling of this chat. And I'm like, I'm just here to see, look for some cool shit. You know, I'm not, I don't have a wish list right now. So uh, I wound up actually inadvertently trying to help him find things. Last year, I was mm. lucky. I was like the first one in the building. And uh, I was able to go straight there and do what I had to do. But again, it was like 24 hours too late because uh, the uh, big dogs got in there first. All right. So what do we got uh, next? Just, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dash. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I'd, I'd say if you're going to Chicago, that's one that you'd want to get into early. Like when I went to Brick Road, Indianapolis, I was going the public day. So does Skett and uh, Nick. They were there, too. Yeah, I wish I could be out there in the Midwest, but the Chantilly one is like literally 10 minutes from my work. It's not a far commute from my house at all. I've never been to that one. I think it might be like 10 hours away, possibly. Well, start walking now. You'll make it by August. <laughs> <laughs> I went to my first one last year in September in Seattle because we do have them in Canada, but not... Um, not many American vendors can come over. It was pretty cool. Was but it all Lego be... or did they have... Was Here? It like... Yeah, yeah, for the Canadian one. Yeah, I mean, it's just Canadian vendors. So not that there's anything wrong with that. That's not what I meant. But um, <laughs> I mean, like Citizen Brick or like K-Town, like they're not coming over here. Right. So going to BrickCon, like my intention was I'm going to Citizen Brick and I'm going to go through that bin and... It was a little like, you know, I, I got there like the first day in the morning and uh, the bin was a little limited, but it was really nice to meet Joe and even just dig through it, even if there wasn't like crazy stuff in there. Um, but it's a fun experience for sure. Yeah. I, even, even um, you know, taking a quick uh, detour here, just going, getting a chance to go to uh, a trade show. It is a lot of fun. I got to meet uh, Benson Bone, who's an amazing handcrafted, handcrafted custom figure maker. Uh, a few other others that make hand handmade figs, and they look good on Instagram. But seeing them in person, I was just even more impressed. All right, so one last section before we really get into the uh, listener question stuff. We've kind of touched on this already with the Lego Black Market. You know, every every hobby is centered on collecting has this, you know different tiers of engagement from the casual to the hardcore. And there, there is a bit of an associate status, you know, that comes with those levels, right? By and large, you know, I've been fortunate enough to meet some great folks who have been willing to share tips and tricks. I mean, I, I don't know if it was because I was just fortunate to meet some good folks, you know, like you, Scat, Max, etc. But my question to you is, do you feel the competitiveness and the focus on completing one's checklist sometimes has led to unnecessary friction or senses of entitlement? Um, I'd say I've, I've seen that before. I mean, I definitely like my heart beats too when I'm uh, about to start Citizen Brick Day. <laughs> like, like, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's definitely, uh, it's definitely competitive, you know, even with friends, like, you know, some people are cool, like, like Nick, he's like, oh man, you can, you can have this. And then, uh, but like, uh, in Brook World Indy, he gave me this glow in the dark, uh, Jason torso. Like that was the, that was the fucking That's best dope. thing they had their uh, past weekend and uh you know he gave it to me like that was super cool like i was gonna keep giving him shit about it but also it was like you know dude if you really <laughs> like it you keep it so yeah i'll definitely take it <laughs> yeah but uh but but yeah i mean yeah there's a lot of uh competitiveness and uh you know sometimes like when you get somebody's color that they collect and 
you know, you kind of like it too, then you got to think like, okay, well, do I like it enough to where I'm not going to offer it to my friend or <laughs> whatever? Yeah, that's got to be tough. Um, I know uh, personally how it feels to be like, hey, that's part of a fit. That, that fig is like my whole MO. That's like what I collect, you know, and how did I not get dibs on this? But mm -hmm. I mean, overall, it's an unhealthy mentality and I've had to subdue it a few times when I've missed out on opportunities, but yeah, you know, I have to realize I'm just one collector of many and I don't, you know, quote unquote, deserve something just because. But I've also learned that things come around eventually. You know, second chances always happen. Uh, I can't imagine the dynamic of you being like, you, know, you like say, like, like Citizen Turtle, you know, gold is his thing. And you have a gold torso that he needs, but you like it. That's got to be an awkward conversation. Because he's invested mm -hmm. so much time and money and energy to building this massive, awesome gold collection. It's too close to home for me. Yeah. <laughs> I have a gold Jason torso. He's not getting. <laughs> oh, cut that. Uh, <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> okay, so switching gears, I've got some questions here I put out uh, on Instagram asking for questions for what they have for, for either you, Dash, or Carrie. We'll just take them one by one and see how it goes from there. So Chanch Olives has asked, how has CB collecting changed from what it may have used to be a few years ago? Pros and cons. I will say mm -hmm. personally, I feel that it's become more accessible. I've noticed Joe printing more stock, but the cons for me would be people are still charging secondhand like they like it like the stock has not increased. I yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, I guess for me, I'm, I guess I'm not really new to Instagram anymore, but ew, there's a lot of, it's easier to access stuff through there, like parts you might need or stuff like that. Um, cons, I would just say there's a lot, a lot of people flipping stuff, not, I'm just meaning eBay people. Um, mm -hmm. They're just going on there to buy on CB day and then they're just checking it right on eBay. And that's really frustrating. Uh, well, price is, is probably the, the most noticeable thing. Um, you know, they, they were $15 a figure for so long, and, and now they're kind of more like 20 25 like directly from Citizen Brick. Now, also, secondhand prices got, have gone up a <laughs> lot, too. People used to sell, like, like say, like a really good head printed by Citizen Brick. They might charge like 8 13 bucks. Now, sometimes people are trying to he sell heads for like 50 bucks or something like that. But, but yeah, like, you know, stuff that's just been released, people could be trying to flip just because it's sold out. Now, I, I wouldn't know from the original Citizen Break Day, but I've heard uh, PK Custom Lego. Um, he used to tell us, you know, like, you, you'd go on, like, when the, when the drop first happened, you know, buy some stuff and then get on hours later and there's still some stuff left. And, and that doesn't really happen unless it's kind of just basic stuff. I've got like seven tabs open and, um, you know, buy, check out, buy, check out, buy, check out, you know, right. so a quick tip for citizen brick foot day. Do not fill your cart and then try and check out because you will get cart sniped. Just put in the cart, check out. The citizen brick day is one of the few days where citizen brick will combine shipping. Um, and, and you don't want to look for too long either. Cause you'll, you'll miss out there. Oh exactly. yeah, yeah. You blink, it's gone. Yeah, and, don't blink. Check out. And, yeah, and then, <laughs> like, but but yeah, the increased stock is something I noticed. Like, the uh, low rider set was announced. I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to afford that. I'm not gonna be able to get it this time. Who can I talk to to maybe hook me up? Do I really need it? And then stars aligned. I grabbed one the second it was available on the site. It was available on the site for weeks straight. I don't think anyone was expecting that. I think everyone thought it was going to be like, again, another Breaking Bad Meth Lab set or Spring Breaker set. Yeah, I think FOMO hit a lot of people with that one. You know, I, I made uh, two separate purchases just so I get two of the tins. What, what was the name of the fruitcake guy? Yeah. All right. So Rick Radiop has a question of what custom, this few dash, what custom art do you have the most of and what draws you to collecting this prints? 
Let me think. I think the figure I have the most of is uh, the the minifigure dreams uh, sig fig. Like either one, I have like every single color almost, and, and that's a lot of damn colors. <laughs> Apart from that, it might be the the colonel, the KFC colonel. Yeah, I'm, I think I have like twenty of those. Uh, me and Nurse Flying Foot kind of have like a competition, like who's the who's the colonel king, like who has the most misprints of that one. But the second part of that question, what what draws me to uh, buying misprints? I mean, one big thing is like the the fig barfing you mentioned before. Like, you can use one torso for like if it's in a different color that that could like give it like a whole new like character. It could be used for. I posted one. Uh, what was it? The Reservoir Dogs. It was one of those torsos, but it was in yellow. Um, so like I used that for for my Jim Carrey's mask figure. That one turned out pretty cool. That's basically it. Like the fig barfing makes makes for some fun combos. Yeah. So Hammerstein, NWC, and Citizen Brian had a pretty much a similar uh, question. What is the hot take on misprint culture? Hot yeah. take. What does that mean again? That's like uh, what something somebody most people wouldn't agree with. I would say hot take would be there's plenty to go around if you just know where to look. Uh, is is that a hot take or is that just a lie? <laughs> <laughs> That's a straight up lie. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't have a damn answer. I want to be nice. We <laughs> gave a question. I want to get him the question and answer. <laughs> like, yeah, I want to answer, but like, I can't think of, you know, what, what would fall under that. Let's yeah. go back to that one. <laughs> so Jay Bricks, he asked, what are your CB day 10 predictions? Or do you have any hopes for CB Day 10? A lot of people have been wanting Fight Club. I don't I don't know if that would happen anytime soon, but I saw uh, True Red just posted a figure Today for it. Today he posted that, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, Joe did mention a set that he's been planning on doing. I think it's going to come for Citizen Brick Day, so that doesn't really count if you know he told me himself. <laughs> I, I would like a third triangle or pyramid head character. We've got, oh, yeah, that kind of has been coming back. Mm-hmm. We've got we've got the Illuminati and we've got the Pizza God. I want a third one. So because I feel like if a third one comes out, we're fulfilling some sort of prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some sort of holy trinity of of money, pizza and something else. So that that's what I'm hoping for is another pyramid guy. I think uh, I think Dumb and Dumber would be cool, but the TMC oh. already did that. So I don't know if I don't know if he would. Oh, yeah. Don't copy. <laughs> don't don't team. <tease. laughs> Carrie, do you have any hopes for a citizen break day? Ten? Oh, I want to say, Joe, if you're listening, more zombies. I felt yes. like last year there weren't that many zombie things, and sorry to say it, I'm a zombie ho. It's the third time saying ho, fourth time, more zombies, more zombies, more zombies. Thank you, you, you and Phil and myself. Um, I've I just picked up about 13 pairs of legs off the site yesterday or Saturday. And so now I need about 14 torsos. So I've got a <laughs> bunch of heads and a bunch of legs and no torsos. So that that's my, my hope is to have complete zombies at some point. Well, you know, in the movies, some of them don't have torsos. So true. I got to buy yeah. some, uh, some splat accessories. Mm-hmm. So, uh, there, there we got one next. year Go ahead. he did like, he did like, he dropped so much molded stuff. It was like a Halloween release. I think it, if you bought like one of everything, it ended up being like three hundred dollars. Oh, worth it! And it, like there weren't even any figures. It was just all fig parts. Nice. Um, all right. Official Brick Universal asks tips for people who are hesitant to get into CB. I mean, a tip for that would be basically be a tip for any kind of lego you collect it's only buy what you like if you're, you're just buying everything yeah, just go for um, it <laughs> it's easy to easy to kind of go over your budget or you know just be stuck with stuff you don't even like that much i mean how could you not like citizen brick but yeah i mean pretty much just buy what you like i would say maybe just build up yourself in the community before going on to ebay um when i first kind of joined Instagram. Uh, a lot of the stuff I had was from eBay because I 
didn't know anyone and I hadn't really bought anything off the site and uh, it gets expensive. So I would, I mean, I would just, if I could go back, I'd maybe start by sticking to the drops, staying off of eBay for a while and making friends. Yeah, I'm going to have to second one about community because that's pretty much how I've ascended to where I am in the superhero side is just, you know, not being a dick. Just, you know, meet people, you know, share knowledge that you can, uh, provide commentary and comments, you know, follow those who collect what you're interested in, ask them questions, don't pester them, but, you know, ask occasional questions and um, don't come in expecting the world to be handed to you because these folks worked for what they got. So I, I would I would definitely just take heed to any advice you're given by the community and do your best not to piss them off. I would also, once again, I'm going to plug episode two, fighting FOMO and burnout. It goes into setting your rules about how to get into these types of things. And I would say when I started getting really involved in Citizen Brick, there was a, a, a subtle push in the back of my head thinking I need to find some, I have something on my list. I need to grab it the second I see it's available. It's okay. It'll come around again. They always do. Um, so those don't get, just pace yourself. That, that'd be my advice. Uh, with, with limited stuff, not not everything comes back around, but there may be a re-release and something, you know, is close enough. Like he's, he's been uh, re-releasing a lot of stuff lately. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so I wasn't specifically referring to like the premium stuff, but maybe like like the mustache zombie hat that just got re-released. Mm -hmm. You know, that's nothing fancy per se. It's just something that was released a long time ago. It has been in circulation for a while. Whoa, do you know how long it took me to find one of those fucking things? Yeah, you and Phil both, <laughs> right? They just dropped. I was I was like, I'm I'm happy to have more, but yeah, some stuff was pretty hard to get and now it's coming back. So that is a good point. Some just be patient. Yeah. I think he originally dropped those with the, the farmer zombie torso. Oh, that was forever ago. Mm-hmm. Citizen Brain, Brian, he's got a lot of questions. How much does not being able to get into shows limit collecting? Personally, I would say it's an additional obstacle if you can't go to a show because of your location or your financial situation. However, going back and leaning on community and making those connections and talking to folks, I think that helps alleviate that geographical barrier. Would you guys agree? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that, that that's something that sucks to miss. I mean, myself, I can't go to every show, but it's cool to go to a couple shows a year. But yeah, I mean, if they never come to your area or close enough to drive, I mean, having friends that go, that'd be a, that'd be a big plus. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a quick example of that. Um, Brick Mania, again, it's right where Brick Fair BA happens. So again, 10 minutes from my work. Not, not a far drive at all. And he, this guy in Poland is a very um, avid Brickmania fan. So sometimes they, they do store-specific drops. We have to get them from the physical store. So I'll go to the store, I'll get them, and I'll ship out to Poland, right? Well, he hit me up on Facebook last week because there's an opening of a store or there is a store in San Diego, to which, of course, I'm, I'm not you know, in Virginia, other side of the country. So I just put out a call on Instagram saying, hey, does anybody in the San Diego area and some folks stepped up and then Benson Bone, who I mentioned, who I met at Brick Fair, you know, last year, he's like, I just moved to San Diego. And he's like, you're telling me there's a Brick Mania store 15 minutes from my campus. So now I put him in touch with the guy in Poland and now they've got a deal worked out. So that's that's how these things come to be. You just got to learn how to network and, you know, you do favors for people. and Eventually they do favors for you. That's really what comes down to it. All right. Uh, one last question from Citizen Brian. What are your feelings or takes on buying anything you can get your hands on during a drop, regardless of whether you want it or not? I'm assuming that this may be referring to trade bait or scalping. I mean, like we said, you can't take too long to, to look. I mean, you definitely want to grab something. But I guess make sure it's something you like. But I mean, you, you don't have too long to look at it, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah scalping sucks, but I mean... What what can you really do about it? I, I know there's some people that don't collect Citizen Brick that, you know, 
go on there just to get stuff so they can make some money real quick. I mean, the product's already made. It's not like it's pre-ordered. I mean, for, for other collectors, it could be a second chance. I mean, you know, that there is a plus to it that, you know, you're going to be spending a lot more, most likely. I'm not a fan of buying for trade bait, um, personally, because again, you know, I've got to work on my, I got to figure out my budget. So any funds that I do have, I'm going to put towards things that are guaranteed things that I know that I want, not things that I hope somebody else wants, but that's just my personal way of approaching it. If buying a bunch of stuff that you don't care about interferes with somebody else who does care, I see the negatives in that, but I also understand that everyone's got a fair shot at buying. You know, there are no bots, so to speak. You know, everything's on the website the exact same time. Um, so it's not like it's not like anyone has an unfair advantage of getting these parts. You know, unless uh, unless Joe were to feel like I know with certain figs he would limit the quantity you can put in your cart. That's probably the only way I can think to combat things that you know you want to prevent people from buying um, multiples of something just for the sake of having it in your back pocket to trade later. I mean, it does seem like him making larger quantities has helped with, uh, you know, people not buying the, the flip lately. But then, you know, there was the, the whole bear thing. But I, I know it, I think it'd be hard to, to flip that with whatever those people paid. I don't know what they paid, but I know it was, oh, uh, geez. Pretty, it was okay. pretty high. So for those who don't know, um, a bunch of us, I, 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 I'm, pr- I'm sure you two did. I know I, if I did, I know you two did. Got an email uh, from from Citizen Brick uh, outlining a special silent auction for a limited printed cocaine bear. There was, I think, two bra- three brown, two black. Yep. All right. Yep. So silent auction meaning you just email with the subject line of cocaine bear and you put in your bid in the in the body of the email. I don't know anybody who won personally, or at least they're not owning up and saying out loud they won. I do know that they went for some ridiculous prices. And that was FOMO in full action right there. Well, I just want to say I am very surprised that nobody's posted one. But then on the other hand, nobody wants the question of how much did you bid? Correct. They probably have it by now, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, oh, well, I don't want to speak for Joe, but he like they're pretty quick at shipping. So I would imagine, especially with that kind of money that everyone has theirs they're just like not saying anything so i know i know it went upwards i know it went well over five hundred dollars i know that much five hundred dollars didn't clear you a bear at least that's what i was told does anybody have any other insight on that i saw on facebook uh somebody said their friend got one i think he said 450 but i can't remember exactly for the brown one not the black brown yeah for the black one's the ones that everyone's gonna want right you know I was like, well, I'm just going to buy a Lego bear and smear some toothpaste on the nose, let it dry, and call it cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll make my you're, own. You're thing. not a citizen brick fiend like like some of us. Yeah, no, those. <laughs> I, I was honored to be included in that email, but I also don't think that it was. I was a target audience, right? You have to be a real. That was for the hardcore folks, and um, the value of owning something that limited from a brand you love. I get it, I get it, but um, that was definitely outside my wheelhouse. It was definitely surprising. All I'm going to oh. say is for anyone out there who got a bear, show us your bears. You know, let's see some pics. We won't ask you how much you paid. I'm I won't. if there was like special packaging for it. Yeah. I want to yeah, see yeah, like seriously. The, 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 what, what do you call them? Bricks? I want to see the bricks, the cocaine bricks. Yeah, the up cocaine close. bricks and the bear. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Show us your know. bear scene. So bear us your bears. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'll print the, the name of the person that won it on the, on the card, like they do with the big shot so they could be forever shamed. <laughs> <laughs> so I got two more questions. Uh, Excelsior bricks. Okay. This one for you. Uh, Dash your favorite fig bark you've made fig bark. You've made either hero CB or whatever. So I do really like my, uh, my Dave Chappelle that I made the, the, uh, what was it? The play a hate is ball one. Um, <laughs> that that was a cool one. But but also I, I love that Jaka uh, butcher butcher coat. Um, I've made like three different figures with that. You know, Zach uh, minifigure folks. 
he told me it would look good with Freddy, so I put it on him. But then I also did like a Big E and uh, Adam Sandler from Uncut Gems with it. Uh, I, just, I just did that one yesterday, I think. But yeah, that, that was a, that one was sweet. How about you, Carrie? Okay, I just want to say Dash, your mask was so good. Yeah, so no, good. I posted a couple days Yeah, ago. it was so good. Um, and my own, uh, I don't know. I mean, I kind of do it a lot and then I mix up all the pieces and then I forget what I've done. Um, but I made uh, recently like a little spider guy. I kind of like him. He's pretty cute. I haven't taken him apart yet. Was that with the CMF uh, spider gear? Yeah. I, I was oh, like, okay. oh my god, there's all this spider <laughs> stuff I don't have. So I did a big bricklink order and spiderfied my guy. You had the, the CB uh, spider eyes on, on that one, didn't you? Yeah, the the spider, like spider face and torso, yeah. and um, and then I got some sweet uh, mag overprint legs that I put on them. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So my favorite fig barf is actually not one I've made. It was actually made by Dash. It's your um, baby head Jesus surfer. Oh yeah. Oh, it was the one I posted for sale. I think I had that on. I think it was on whatnot. No, I didn't put that on whatnot, did I? Yes. I'm, yeah, I, I can't remember. I, I think I got it on whatnot. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I remember because yeah. I was sitting in a parking lot on my on my phone because <laughs> I didn't want to miss, yeah. you know, the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I actually drilled. I cut like the the neck stud piece off and then drilled the drill the hole in it so I could put that uh, head on there. It's it's glorious. So for those who, who <laughs> have never seen it, it's um it's a yellow bare chested tor you know fat dude torso um things blue shorts. And he's got an all-American surfboard, and he's got um, a yellow Citizen Break Baby Jesus head. It just it just <laughs> tells a story. I don't know. <laughs> it's really good. But uh, my the one that I've made that's my favorite. Actually, it's tied. Um, my hot dog robot that I made for that one brew post I did a while back with the hot dog lab. Um, he was growing the monster, the hot dog monster, in the in the tube. But I also actually using one of your heads that you designed, Ash, the bleeding eyes. Oh, I didn't design it. I, I just uh, had a hoarder design. For well, me. hoarder designed it. Mike designed it. But the one that I bought from you and I gave him like the cornrows hair and he's got the CB um, Green Beret uh, torso with those shoulders sleeves. But then I also <laughs> gave okay. him. I also So he looks bad as hell, but he's also got a beard and the um, bleeding eyes under his sunglasses. But uh, he also peed his pants. <laughs> 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 I'm sure I've seen these, but I can't think of them. Yeah. You actually DM me about it. You were, like, you were like, what's the story here? I'm like, I don't know. He's a tough guy, but he uh, pissed himself because he's not so tough. <laughs> <laughs> Speak, uh, speaking of uh, fig combos, I definitely got to uh, make my entry for, for Mini Fig Monday. <laughs> so we were going to plug we that at here. the end, but we can talk about it right now. Uh, actually, that's just one last question, then we'll circle back. Uh, Shenandoah Brickworks asks, what is your net dashes for you? What is your next collab design going to be? Um, well, lately I've been, I've been having some 3d printed stuff done with uh, Titan King and, and brick affliction. Um, I mean, those are quick and easy to do. I'll get the design, you know, in less than a week and, uh, brick affliction. He's, he's super fast. Like he gets my stuff done in like less than two weeks did he print those recent ones you did the heads the penis heads yeah 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 he did those <laughs> um and then i just posted uh, a new one today some furbies and uh those, those were kind of a bitch to paint but uh they, they turned out kind of cool but I'm, I'm talking about my paint job is i'm not a professional painter like like kirby but i think i did okay so he's on they look really page? good oh oh they, they look, look really, really good. good yeah Thanks, guys. I feel like you spent like a lot of time on them. Am I wrong? Yeah, I mean, I, I did it on two separate days, like the paint job at least. Like I, I'll do like priming one day and then painting another day and then the clear coat the, the that, very last day. But that's a lot of work for someone who doesn't have the patience to dye something. Yeah, in six exactly. Minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm growing. <laughs> you know what's funny is you have somehow managed to nail that haunting set that they have in real life. Oh, yeah. Nail the what? What was that? <laughs> that haunting stare that they have. 
Oh, yeah, like my favorite ones, I was just telling the people, Pink one. some people in the group chat are the creepy ones. Like I did like two demon <laughs> Furbies. I love the, the red eyes. I see that one. Yeah. <laughs> and the the other ones like white eyes with like a little bit of pink under them, so like they're rolling to the back of its head. Yeah, I see it now. <laughs> oh, these are awesome. <laughs> oh, so these are available on your dash brick sales. It's dash brick underscore sales. Yeah, just I just posted those today, but by the time you post this it'll probably be a few days ago at least all right so your next collab design challenge you don't do you know what it's going to be i mean you've talked about what you're doing now yeah i kind of ignored that question completely so so the very next thing i mean it's probably just gonna be another 3d print um uh, i have one that i haven't posted yet but i have it with me i just haven't like painted any of them yet I did, uh, what well, shit, by the time this is posted, I might have them ready. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I had them do these uh, pogo monkey masks, like a <laughs> space monkey mask or something from oh, uh, cool. Grand Theft Auto Online. I don't yeah, know how close familiar. it'd be like to that hit monkey thing, but uh, it's it's like a monkey mask with a cigar, but it, it goes over a head. So like okay. it's got like eye holes, but they're kind of wide. I don't know. I don't know how well they would you'd be able to like line them up with a Lego head though. Uh, if you won't do it, I'm sure someone else will figure it out. Yeah. I mean, I feel like they might work well with those uh, Star Wars, like those anime eye type things. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Sket, Sket recently um, revealed his uh, his new Sig Fig torso. Are you uh, in head? Are you going to do a Sig Fig anytime soon? So, I've had a torso design for a while. I mean, I'm, sh- I'm sure you've seen that Dash Brick sticker that I give out a lot. I have one. Yeah. Um, I have the design that can be used for a torso. I just, uh, it's just not happened yet. I mean, I don't have a, a head design, but I mean, that could easily be put on the torso at least. Not a lot of people have them, have them but I've done uh, Undead Nightmare torsos, which use the same type of art as those dash bricks. You know, like the, the font, I guess. I, I considered those like a sig fig torso, but I, I had those done by Eclipse Graphics a while back. Carrie, do you have any additional questions or? I, yeah, actually, it. I have one, and it just kind of loops back to when you were asking Dash um, to describe some terms for the new people of the community. Okay. And mine would be to provide the definition of what DSP means for new <laughs> well, people. I was thinking that's what you were going to ask. Because <laughs> I, I remember for the longest time, everyone would say it, and I'm like, I have no idea what that means. So then I like secretly asked somebody. It's like, don't judge me, but I don't know what this means. Um, okay, DSP. Uh, so so Billy was like the first person that seemed to use it a lot, but I think it came from this dude, Spencer. Uh, it's your boy something. Um, it stands for uh, dick smoking prices, which is kind of, you know, pretty, pretty relevant to the CB aftermarket. Um, you know, prices going high for something that originally cost like 15, 20 bucks, whatever. But yeah, that, that's that's where it came from. So, wait, Carrie, are you figuring this out just now, or did you know? No, no, out like, there? because Al, <laughs> Al, Al of Mini Bigs made a torso like ages ago, and I bought one, but I had no idea what it meant. So then I had to ask him, <laughs> what I was like, what is this? But now that I know, I'm like, yeah. So just, you know, for the new people. Yes, we want to arm them with knowledge. Yes. So, <laughs> are there are there other terms that that people use in the CB community that like a lot of other people wouldn't know? I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I mean, that was me just writing down some notes for um for the show. I'm sure as soon as we all hang up and I get to editing, I'll think of something new. Yeah. But, I mean, I think we've laid a pretty good groundwork to helping people understand CB culture. And honestly, in retrospect, uh, just having this conversation with you, I don't feel that it's any different than any other collecting community. The the fans of it are passionate and dedicated. The entry level is quite low. And the depths you can go to explore your fandom run deep. And it really just comes down to pacing yourself, setting your roles, and building your network. So you can make it as least frustrating as possible to enjoy something that that would be my take. So um, one last plug, uh, Carrie, we'd like to discuss minifigure Monday. Sure. 
Um, basically, I'm very new to it. This is um, this coming Monday is my fourth uh, actual Monday. So I have. It's very simple. It's like a contest. No prizes. Your prizes you get to brag, and then everyone shares your photo. Mm -hmm. um, you. So I'm doing a system where. I'm having people vote on the themes because I figured it might gain traction and have more people enter and that doesn't always work. So it's really fun. It gets you creative. Um, just check my stories or I have a highlight uh, section on my page and it has simple guidelines, pretty much just be nice and make a new thing don't use like an old post uh create a fig barf based on whatever theme is for the next month or sorry week and uh, send it to me don't post it on your page and then every monday i just like put them against each other and people vote on on the winner yep and all you win is some street cred street so. cred <laughs> but it's big it's big street cred <laughs> thanks thanks for reminding me because i have to be constantly reminded to, to make something <laughs> yeah i started harassing people um just to get more entries but um there is a whole backstory to minifig monday but i am pretty new to it so i think it may have started out as like a modding thing maybe dash would know i mean i know a few of the modders posted it i don't know if it was ever really four mods um, oh, okay so i know oh. billy did it at one point right and yeah. then uh, colin tk uh who was before you space cowboy uh space so i my first entries were space cowboy and then fallout bricks did it and then a jazz yeah. did it all oh, right yeah. and then i, I was around it. for fallout and a jazz doing yeah. it yeah this has been yeah. a multi-generational uh you know effort yeah and we're just keep it trying to keep it alive and this one person gets kind of, you know, I don't want to say burnt out, gets, you know, does their run and they, they just pass the torch. And I think it's really cool that this is probably going on for a couple of years now. Um, oh, yeah. That you've got like, we've already named what, five or six people that have held this torch and now it's Carrie's turn to, to run it. And um, it's always a lot of fun. And the themes, you know, people get to vote on the themes. So I think it'll be too late to enter by the time this airs, but the theme coming up is talk show host, right? Yeah, tomorrow's theme is talk show host. I voted Cocaine Bear, but whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I so would that, I, yeah, I'm glad yeah. that one didn't win because I was like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that was a very specific. And um, <laughs> or is that your subtle way of trying to out the people that won one? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a joke. And if it had one, I would have just been like, just kidding. We're doing this one instead. Yeah. So I think um, I, I participated in only one so far. It was. Um, the spiders. Mm -hmm. There's the uh, Spider Man one where I did the Peter Parker naked with the uh, the Jocka brick uh, new Thor bottom torso with the pixelated crotch. Did you and win that one? I did. I did. Um, <laughs> I was like spiders. I I I got to represent. You had all the was, arms on it, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. used the gin arms. I used the gin flesh arms. So I used uh, the mini bigs Spider Man torso. That was flesh colored so it was like a nude torso but it had the spider-man logo printed on it nice and then i gave him the uh the bully mcguire hair and head from uh cross check so this smirking emo peter parker naked with six arms wasn't that the like the final costume on the spider-man game it's like a, a naked <laughs> it's like a super <laughs> unlock <Parker>. you know <laughs> it was a mod so but all right, so we're going to head wrap this up. Carrie, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having, having me. On. I look forward to having you on for more episodes. Dash, always a pleasure. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks. See ya. Okay, so that wraps up our introduction into Citizen Brick culture. Uh, special thanks to Dash Bricks for swooping in at the last minute to help pull this episode off. And of course, thanks always to my co-host, Carrie, for popping in. And uh, she, she's just too damn funny. I've linked to both Instagram pages in the show notes, as well as Dash's sales page, in case you want to check out what he has available. Lastly, if you wish to lend some support to keep this podcast and other community initiatives going, there is a Buy Me Coffee link available in the show notes. Though never obligated, it's always appreciated. 
Uh, so thanks again. Take care and I'll see you next time. I want you on my rack. I want to make you ring. I want you to unwrap. I want to pull your string. Bring me the next.